Let's do an example about estimating the slope of a tangent line. Here are the directions. Make a guess about the slope of the tangent line at the indicated point by making a table of slopes of secant lines, and then write the equation of the tangent line using your guess. So our equation in this case is f of x equals 3x squared, and the point we're interested in is x equals 2. So with what we know so far, we don't know how to find the slope at just a single point, which is what the slope of the tangent line is. From algebra, we only know how to find the slope between a pair of points. So that's why in this case we're just making a guess or estimating the slope of the tangent line. Uh, next, uh, in the next chapter we'll do about derivatives, we'll actually be able to find this exactly. So that's something to look forward to. So if you remember back um, a few slides ago, we were talking about the relationship between average and instantaneous velocity. And um, we don't yet know how to find instantaneous velocity for the same reasons, but we were able to use the average velocity to estimate the instantaneous velocity. Um, at a certain point. And the way we did that is by looking at tighter and tighter intervals around the point we were interested in. And as those intervals got smaller and smaller and closer to the point we were interested in, we found that the average velocity approached the instantaneous velocity. So that's the same approach we're going to do here. So in our table, um, where, where we're going to put the slopes of the secant lines, we're going to want to use intervals that are tighter and tighter around x equals 2. So let's start setting up that table. So on top here, we can look at several different intervals. And then we're going to want to look at the slope of the secant lines over those intervals. Okay, so let's think of some good intervals. So we're thinking about x equals 2 here, and I'm going to want to make some intervals that start out maybe kind of big. So we could start like 2, 3. But then I'm going to want to make my intervals tighter and tighter around 2. So I might do 2 to 2.5, 2 to 2.1, to 2.01 and 2 to 2.001 okay so I'm interested in what's happen happening exactly at x equals 2 but because I don't yet have the tools to do that I'm instead just looking at intervals closer and closer to 2 alright so let's just start calculating these values I'll do that down here and then we'll put them back to the, in the table Okay, so I'm just calculating slopes here. So um, for the interval from 2 to 3, the slope of the secant line is going to be f of 3 minus f of 2 over 3 minus 2. That's just a change in y over the change in x over that interval. So to save ourselves some time, I've gone ahead and calculated these function values. Um, so f of 3 is 27 minus 12, and this is over 1, which is 15. Okay, then we're just going to go down the line and calculate the rest of these slopes. Okay, so I'm calculating the slope of the secant lines. So this is f of 2.5 minus f of 2 over 2.5 minus 2. Okay, so that gives me 18.75 minus 12 over 0.5, which equals 13.5. All right, and then we can do the interval from 2 to 2.1. So that's f of 2.1 minus f of 2 over 2.1 minus 2. And that's 13.23 minus 12 over 0.1, which is 12.3. And then 2 to 2.01, which is f 
of 2.01 minus f of 2 over 2.01 minus 2. So that's 12.1203 minus 12 over 0 0.01, uh, which gives us 12.03. And finally, 2 to 2.001, and that's f of 2.001 minus f of 2 over 2.001 minus 2. Okay, and that's 12.012003 minus 12 over 0 0.001, and that's 12.003. Okay, so a little tedious, but we needed those uh, values for our table to get to the interesting part of the problem. So let me just transcribe these up here. So let's see, this was 15, 13.5, 12.3, 12.03, and 12.003. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've simply cho carefully chosen some intervals that are getting tighter and tighter around the point we care about, which is x equals 2, and we've calculated the slope of the secant line to the curve over those intervals. Okay, so what should we do next? Okay, so now it's time to actually make the guess about the slope of the tangent line. So let's look and see what's happening in our table. Okay, so what should be happening is as I tighten my interval around 2, the slopes of the secant lines should be approaching the slope of the tangent line. So as my intervals get smaller, what does it appear that these slopes are approaching? So I've got 15, 13.5, 12.3, 12.03, 12.003. So to me, it looks like this is approaching 12. Okay? I can imagine that if I made my interval um, a little smaller, that I might be even closer to 12. So I can't know for sure, of course, but that's why this is just a guess at this point. So I'm going to guess that the slope of the tangent line is 12. Okay, so the notation I've used there, um, m is often used to denote the slope, and I've just used a subscript of tan for tangent. So I'm guessing that the slope of the tangent line is 12 in this case. Okay, so the last thing we want to do for this problem is just to write the equation of the tangent line that uses our guess. So let's practice using point slope form to write this equation of the line. Now to uh, write my equation in point slope form, there's two things I need the slope and the point. So I've already got my slope, I guess 12. So um, the point is, well I know it's at x equals 2, and then it's whatever the function value is at 2, which if you plug in 2 to f of x, it's 3 times 4, so that's 12. Okay, so I've got point and slope, so I simply plug it into the point slope form format. Okay, so that's going to be y minus the y value, which is 12, equals the slope, which is also 12, times x minus the x value. Okay, and then if I want, I can simplify this to get it in y equals form. So this is y minus 12 equals 12x minus 24, and then I add 12 to both sides and get y equals 12x minus 12. All right, and that's our guess for the slope, uh, sorry, for the equation of the tangent line. And it is just a guess at this point.